part of what we're going to talk about is, is using remote access solutions for critical technologies like your CAD, your billing, uh, accounting packages, and, and some HR stuff. So a remote desktop to start with is a technology that allows you to sit in front of one computer and access another computer. Uh, it allows you basically a window into another machine. So if you'll excuse the Windows pun, uh, it, it really lets you reach through a, a portal or a window and manipulate another computer like you're sitting in front of it. A lot of folks have, uh, have experimented with the kind of go to my PC type application for a, a home machine or an office machine. Anybody, anybody use the go to my PC personal remote desktop kind of technology? Okay, this is like that hooked up on Goofball. Okay, <laughs> it's like you can get uh, 15 to 20 users sharing one beefy machine. So it really reduces what you, what you have to manage. Um, the existing data access models that, that I've encountered through, through my time in this industry are the single site with in-house servers. That's where I was coming from. Was we had one station with one server closet. I, I don't even call it a room, it was a server closet. And some stuff that looked like maybe IBM rejected it in the early 80s and they jammed it in our closet. Okay, the, uh, the kind of the next model I've encountered is the home and satellite office model. And you have one home office and then some satellite offices and everybody needs some access, but there's not really a, an overarching plan. So the, I, if anybody's using either of these two models, I'm not talking bad about them. I mean, it's gonna kind of sound like that, but I, these, are, these are my observations. Usually a single site model, the servers grow out of necessity. <coughs> this is, hey, we wanna go from time stamping run cards to some kind of CAD, we'll, we'll put in a server. Oh, well that server needs upgraded, so we'll put in a second server and do mapping or whatever else. Uh, there's usually uh, a lack of a strategic plan for how this system is gonna grow. It's a, uh, I like to call it the bolt-on model. <laughs> like, oh, we need something else. Yeah, throw another server in the rack, it'll be fine. Uh, and there's uh, not really any infrastructure planning to go along with this. Like I said, I was working with a server closet. There was poor AC. Or, uh, heating and cooling, so there was uh, just the best possible environment for a server, right? Bad electricity and no climate control. I'm sure it was, it was destined to fail. So the home and satellite office model uh, is often driven, driven by growth. Well, we started as a small service with one station. Oh, we popped up another station over here about 50 miles away. Uh, we'll get some kind of VPN going between the two of them and they can share the one server we got. Again, there was some planning, but not really a, an overarching strategic plan. And a lot of times these are, we gotta have this up by the end of the week, what can you go to Best Buy and get today? <laughs> okay. I know everybody has, has found themselves in a position where it's like, man, we need this online in two hours. Here's the card, here's the charge card, go for it, right? Again, this, this type of environment often has minimal infrastructure planning. Okay, that, that satellite office, I'm sure it was equipped with the best server closet that we could find, but uh, it's still a closet, poor heating and cooling, poor electricity. So the common problems of putting in a proper infrastructure in your building, okay, it's expensive. <coughs> it's expensive to have an electrician come out and wire up a proper room, not to mention the real estate for that server room. It could be a bunk room, it could be another dispatch chair, it could be a lot of things that are gonna give more return right away. So it's expensive. If we don't do it, we created a single point of failure. So you raise your hand if you've got servers in your primary office right now. What are you guys doing for backup air conditioning? Open volume. <laughs> if it involves praying, uh, I've been there, okay? Uh, so we want to create systems that have little to no redundancy because redundancy is expensive. Redundancy costs twice as much, right? <laughs> Three times as much depending on how many levels of redundancy you want. The other downside to, to doing a, an in-house, everything hosted on local machines model is somebody's got to touch each workstation. Is anybody responsible for desktop support? Yeah. How many computers in your building? Do you want to touch every day? Do you want to touch each machine? Yeah. I found that uh, by, by centralizing everything onto one remote server, my phone rings a third as much because I patch one machine and everybody gets it. It's not a good use of everybody else's time while they weren't billing or dispatching or doing HR functions. And the systems often can't keep pace with the growth of your company. You want to pop up a new, uh, a new office that's going to service another 75 runs a day. Well, that's going to put you over the threshold before your servers can handle. Now you're looking 60 days design and build for a new server and you can't keep up. 
Okay, so the scalability is just not there. The last thing that's not there is the what if. What if your primary office is a fire? What are you gonna do? Your, your customers are still gonna expect your ambulance to show up. The dispatch center's not inhabitable. You don't have access to your CAD. Congratulations, you're back on paper punch cards. Everybody's favorite day to be a dispatch is when you're punching the time clock for the run cards, right? So disaster recovery and response, do you have a plan? It's really, it's tough with the home office, satellite office, or the in-house server model. It's really, really difficult. So peppered throughout the, the slides, you're gonna see this, this case study. I have uh, deleted any company-specific information, but I bet you'll be able to figure out what I'm talking about. Let's look at a small or medium-sized ambulance service of about 19 units with a, a high growth potential. They're, they're on the verge of expanding into several new markets. Um, they have some aging in-house servers that may possibly be jammed in a closet with poor heating and cooling. No redundancy in environmental services. There is maybe a backup generator, but nobody's real sure if it's gonna come on. Nobody's real sure. Uh, you know, we, yeah, we tested it a couple months ago. And a part-time in-house IT person. He's uh, assigned other duties, but when something breaks, his phone rings. And uh, they've contracted a local IT vendor for desktop support. Hey, we need a new PC here. Bring it in instead of the training person that's gonna use it. Okay? This case study right here, after we get to know people, we're gonna have a, a nice fall September day and uh, the building gets struck by lightning. Okay, this in-house IT guy is in the middle of a state forest, backpacking, with his cell phone turned off. He's back to his car Saturday morning to find 11 messages from the president, CEO, lead dispatcher, everybody saying, we don't know where you are, but we have big problems. Okay, that's the kind of disaster that not having a, a disaster recovery plan really leaves you, I mean, your pants are full on down. There is, there is no, there is no two ways about it. You are unprepared. So the, the solution that, that we're gonna talk about today is to get it out of the office, and you'll see get IT out, out of the office. Get it, get it someplace else. There are people that specialize in hosting equipment for preparedness and redundancy. We're not those people. I'm not gonna call them if my dad's having a heart attack. I'm gonna call us, right? Well, I hope that we recognize the expertise there. So the two basic models for getting things out of your building are gonna be a shared cloud model, very similar to the trauma soft situation. There's a provider that services a bunch of customers with shared hardware, shared infrastructure. And the private cloud model, you build your own solution that you can access through the cloud. So who can tell me what cloud computing or in the cloud means? It's kind of one of those nebulous things. What, who can define that for me? Nobody? Over the internet. Over the internet, okay. Anybody else? Okay, well Wikipedia says, because you know, Wikipedia knows everything. <laughs> cloud computing is the use of computing resources that are delivered as a service over a network, usually the internet. So it doesn't have to be the internet, but that's the most common method of, of cloud computing. But it's, it also delivers that software as a service model. Okay, this, this is not technology that we are paying for and buying and owning. This is, hey guys at Trumpsoft, I need a CAD, time and attendance system, here's my monthly check. Okay, there are a lot of advantages to that. You, you don't have to have an IT person really in-house. You just have to have somebody that can pick up the phone and say, Mike, I got problems. Okay. The private cloud, there's a little more management involved, uh, but it often involves hardware co-location, meaning you take those same servers or new servers or whatever and you put them in somebody else's facility. Uh, Self-hosted web applications, meaning you write your own web app or you download and install a web server package and you use that application on machines that you own. So the co-location benefits, uh, the, the co-location centers that I'm most familiar with are also um, Department of Defense <coughs> nodes. So their uh, increased security is fairly robust. Uh, a lot of these places, customers like you and I don't have access to the server floor, the, the floor of the server farm, without an escort. Which makes me feel really good. Because that means that Jason isn't gonna walk into my data center and over to my rack and start pushing buttons. 